times. Well, I just want to show you guys what sort of outfits we use up in Mozambique. I'm starting off from, from the lighter stuff, or, or your, your, your bread and butter basics. Everyone will come up here on the fish for uh, multiplier reels with sort of like 045 or 050 nylon, 30, 35 pound nylon, putting dead baits or live baits. This assaults at 50. It's got 05 uh, uh, Kingfisher, giant abrasion line on there. All right, on that, it's a Poseidon uh, Kutza Classic. General purpose, phenomenal reel. It's got a fast ratio, a carbon text wash, it comes standard. The other one has been around for a very long time. It's a Grand Wave 50, very good shore uh, and, um, casting reel. Great for the boats as well. And then going down again in price there, we're looking at. Basically what you're looking for, you're looking for a light tackle spinning rod. So you can catch bonito with it for live bait. You can catch live bait with it, you put a bait jig on. You can pitch baits to them for bluefin. It's really a versatile outfit. You throw a little stick bait, like here we've got this Maria loaded stick bait on there. Kuta eat that, Wahoo Protocol, everything eats that. It's light tackle, 33 pound uh, triple fish on there, but it does the job. And uh, oh, like in the one show, we end up catching them all. And I mean, that's for me is quite spectacular. Uh, we off the go go again. We've got miserable good conditions um, this morning. We've got a southeast blowing, it's been raining, it's very, very bumpy. We've managed to scoop some live bait. I'm going to throw a popper first at uh, one of Marcus's uh, favorite little spots here. And we're going to throw a big popper for some from GTs. And if that doesn't work out, we're going to pitch some live baits uh, at, at, at the rock here. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you can get one or two fish. We're just sussing out and signing around. And um, yeah, the, the the big poppers are for the for ca catching bigger GTs, and then the pitching uh, the live baits with uh, medium to light tackle. That's going to be more for your your bluefin, your uh, yellow spots, and your black tip kingies. So yeah, I hope you can get some fish for you guys. All right, well the weather's pretty bad, so um, we're just going to have to film with some of these guys, yeah. All right, well today you can see the um, the weather was really really atrocious. We fished in about a 15 to 20 knots southeast. We had to pack away the the proper camera and, and fish with a um, with a waterproof camera. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in the rougher the water, the, the better the fishing. And today was no different. Pro prove that theory right. Uh, we started off. Marcus took us to awesome little reef just uh, just up north of uh, of Lagoga, and um, we got some live baits there. So we got some cigar scans. Um, we we sat around for quite a while. In fact, in the rush, managed to sneak sneak a shoal in that in that washy washy water. Managed to see see a shoal of uh, cigar scads. Got uh, we must have got 30 or 40. Kept in the live bait well, and so far, that's, that's, in this trip, that's proved to be golden to get to get the the live bait. We moved back to the other spot and we started um, popping uh, with the heavier tackle. Mark has got a nice uh, bluefin of probably I don't know four or five kilos. that the bigger fish weren't there so we had to scale down uh, go down with a 30 pound and 50 pound braided outfits and pitching loud baits at, at rock boils and that proved to be a lot of fun straight away i went on with a fish uh, went into the rocks quickly and cut me off but gave me a bit of a hiding for the 30 pound 
um, assume it was a bluefin, but we'll never know. It could have been a 30 kilo GT, and it could have been a 4 kilo bluefin, we will never know. Um, Marcus went behind me and he went on. He also got a, quite a, a nice bluefin there, probably about two, three kilos. A lot of fun. You can see it's actually a really beautiful fish. Uh, shortly after, I threw out a lot of bait and went on straight away. Boom. And that was another uh, bluefin, probably about a five kilo fish. On the 30 pound tackle, the ground outfit, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a challenge, you do lose some, but it's just got to be saying you're prepared to t take one or two hardings just to get the, the glory of a, a better fish out on the 30 pound. triple fish on there, it's an 8 wee braid. On that is uh, the 8 foot 6 Saltus, Dawa Saltus rod. It's a lovely spinning rod, I have to have this little outfit. Uh, it's perfect for this little stuff. You're going to get smoked for the bigger GTs, but that's part of the challenge. Um, on that, we've got these live cigar scads, which is deadly local bait. And you can see I've rigged it with a, a mustard circle hook there. It's a 4 0 circle, and I've snelled it with uh, signal and fluorocarbon. That's pretty much the rig. Quite nerve wracking uh, skipping so close to the surf. We've got a howling onshore wind, so basically it keeps wanting to push the boat onto the onto the reef. So two guys are fishing and uh, we're taking turns, and one of us is, is skipping the boat and just watching it. Very similar to fishing for Garrick, how we fish for Garrick in the south. Quite fun, that's awesome. We're actually using a 50 pound outfit, we're using a Salter 7 foot 6 uh, spinning and, and, and jigging rod. Um, got 55 pound on, just a little heavier, hoping for the for the bigger fish. Probably got another bluefin. That's what's quite nice with the using the circle hooks. You can see they hook in the corner, so it doesn't. You need to fresh pull them a little bit. They inhale the whole bait, but it's nice to let them eat a bit. And you can just unhook them like that. Bluefin kingfish, very beautiful. You can see on the light up the blue there. You gotta be careful of the scoots. What they call the scoots. You zoom in there, you see it's very very sharp. You can catch yourself pretty easy, that's why we've got a wet rag which we've been handling quite a few of the fish. Anyway, you can turn them upside down, generally they behave. Let them go. Yeah. You, want, you want to let go? Are you going to let go? Sure. Yeah. All in a rush. Wow. Go on that, Happy days. I love catching fish. Where is horrendous? The other boats, uh, the soft minetis have gone back. <laughs> they won't enjoy that, but uh, yeah, it, was, it must have been geez, gusting 25 knots early on. We actually couldn't film with this proper camera, um, but now the wind seems to be dropping down. We've got good live bait in the hatch, and I'm happy. We're looking forward to a good day. Overcast, I'm a firm believer. When it's good to fish, it's not good for fish. When in conditions like this, it's rough, it's not good to fish, it's hard to fish in. Fish feed in water like this. It's turbulent, the fish have to keep moving, um, there's more current, more oxygenated water. You catch fish in water like this, and it's overcast, they eat all day. Yeah, a little smaller fish, but still, the fish. Blue 
dolphin. Beautiful fish. We have caught a, a couple of bluefin, but I tell you what, I'll take this opportunity anytime I can because I've caught more bluefin in this session here than I have in my whole life before. It's a pleasure to be able to catch these fish. There you go. The beautiful, beautiful fish. Hey, 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 great tackle. Great fun with light tackle. The 30 pound stuff. And the last thing about the place we're staying at is uh, Lagoga. Um, Luminetes are hosting us at the moment, and we drove back, I think it was about six, I'm looking at the point now, maybe five k's, six k's right from here. No, no big runs. Uh, we're from Durban where we have to run 30, 40, 50 k's sometimes, get proper fishing. Yeah, once you're here, you've got three k's to one mark, five k's to another mark, and it's all good fishing. We're here in uh, August, the fishing has been pretty slow for what it's like here, yeah, but still very, very good to what we used to. So yeah, that's, it's been great. I think with that, guys, we're gonna say goodbye. We're gonna carry on fishing at uh, Lagogo. Yeah. Moving along. Very, very popular outfit for this area it is, a, is quite a versatile um, popping jigging outfit. So you got 50 pound braid on this. Actually, these are 55 pound Saltiga boat braid. What we do on these rods, we can either pop, we can throw a stick bait, and we can uh, jig. Mostly the guys talk about squid jigs. They're very, very uh, popular. They are quite uh, effective in this area. We haven't had, because of the wrong time of year, we haven't had great fishing with the squid jig. The water's been colder, but that's about to change. The wind's changing and the water's warming up. So that's still to come. We've got the Saltist 4 5 double It's got a very fast retrieve. Uh, and on that, it's done a Saltist uh, 7 foot 6 popping and jigging rod. You cannot put, put it in the same class as the other Saltist. Yeah, this is a two piece light spinning rod. This is a, a versatile drop, uh, popping and jigging rod. The other one is the top of the range, probably one of the best reels in the, in the world, is in my opinion, the Salt Eager. It's a 4 5 double O. Uh, top, uh, top of the range, it's got a great retrieve, and the drag system can literally stop trucks. But that's a smaller one. Same, we've got Salt Eager boat braid, 55 pound on there. All right, the last three I've got the Salt Eager um, Her Hiramasa, the 5 foot 6 jigging rods. On there, we've got a Salt Eager 6000 GT on both of them. One's got gator braid, 120 pound, and the other one's got Salt Eager boat braid, 100 pound. Now, these are short rods. We've actually got them rigged up to go down with live bait for amberjack, but they are the ideal jigging rods. This is what you want to be jigging heavy tackle. Sort of 60, 80, 100 meters deeper, and you, you're basically targeting amberjack and any fish that you can't stop with a light to tackle. Don't need three of these, two, two or one, preferably two on the boat's fine. And then one popping stick. You need at least one popping stick for your boat when you come up to Mozambique. Here's an eight foot Poseidon. Uh, popping stick, very, very strong rod. The, eight, the, the, the length gives you the casting, the distance, so you can cover a lot of water when popping. And on that, it, it's got a Saltig uh, dogfight. It's a 6.5 double O. It's got a 130 pound uh, triple fish gator braid on there. And same thing, I mean, that thing will literally stop a, a bus in its track. Uh, great, great for runs. You don't use this heavy stuff as much, but it's great to have when you come to Mozambique, you want to make the most of it. And, and, and this is the kind of tackle that gets you those trophy fish. Well, we're off the coast of Lagogo, Mozambique. It's a thousand kil uh, kilometers north of uh, Devon. And I'm joined with uh, Narosh and, and Marcus here. It's horrendous conditions. I don't know if the, the camera's showing it, but I'm actually feeling green as hell. Uh, anyway, Mr. Persistent over here wants to go looking out for amberjack marks or whatever. So we're going to take a stroll, stroll out and uh, one or two dips for ambers, and then we'll take the day as it comes from then. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to show you the baits we're using. It's the glass cat. Just going to show you how to rig it. It's quite tricky with a circle hook in the mouth through the hard bit and push the point through. There, yeah, just like that there. Boom. That's him. I'm going on. Are you in gear? Yeah, you're on gear. <laughs> I'm on to Sailey. I'm 30 pound gear. <laughs> I'm 30 pound gear. Talk about gun to a knife fight. <laughs> you reckon, dip? Dip, yeah. This thing like, doesn't even know he's hooked properly yet. Yeah, I'm gonna we were driving. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Our legend uh, cameraman 
shot tonight, spotted it in the most horrendous conditions. My face is green like you have no idea. I've been seasick and I'm not seasick anymore. <laughs> There's no savers, look at him. That's a marlin, it's not a sailing. It is a marlin. Oh, it's a trick! Another two bloody rod gannets picked up the 50 pound outfit. There was only a 30 pound one, so I grabbed the 30 pound and I got it. What I'm actually fighting this fish with is triple fish 33 pound. The Dawa salt is 8 foot 6 rod. And the Dawa called here 4000. This is a this is a bonito rod fish. This is a small tuna <laughs> and I'm fighting a marlin. It's incredible fun. It's the right size. That time we can get this fish. The main concern is the bull wrap on the on the leader. Make sure that leader does last. But I also think with the circle hook, you might be hooked in the corner. And it's nah, there's nice. nothing on the leader. Not a circle. It's a massive big gun tour. Oh really? Yeah. yeah so he's down. Yeah. I pitched the last cigar scare to him. Free spooled him. The hook's inside. Yeah, he's tight. He's little, eh? This is where. It counts. <laughs> it's a nerve wracking time. Okay, I was right, you know. chance I had but I just threw it for 30 pounds. That was that's a special fish. Eh? That's that's to the heart. That goes the memories. Well done. Right, boy, thank you. Well, let's uh let's carry on. I really didn't think I'd ever do this in my life. We were literally driving around looking for marlin. <laughs> we uh in the 20 minutes of driving we've seen three marlin, two were together, one that I caught the other one uh was in hook and the other one now we uh, saw didn't get a chance to pitch it properly. Um but we just cruise around now if you're gonna be doing stuff like this you wanna be wearing proper eyewear Macro escapes, got HD definition uh, lenses on them. This, you can fish all day or stuff like this. Start this, you're squinching your eyes, the glare, cut you, too much glare, and you can't spot properly. Here, we're looking for a little, tiny little fin or a bull sticking out of the water. You 
can't be uh, trying to do this with, with no eyewear. A lot of that, I see a lot of guys on the boat that don't wear sunglasses, and it's for one not good for your eyes, and for two it's just it's just such a handicap. Bring a roll of toilet paper on the front board and clean them every hour if you have to. Let's see what this is. All right, we're just uh, all that. in these horrendous conditions. We just uh, put some uh, the, the marlin we've seen around the surface, and we got bitten off by the one pitch bait we had in the marlin. Uh, we just put some kudos to stick sticks out, and uh, Marcus is winding in what seems to be quite a juvenile, but let's have a look and see. Hello. It's waking up, whatever it is. <laughs> right, I'm using an SL30. Probably one of the smoothest drags you can get, just hold on. Just getting a little bit SL50, sorry. 12 and a half kilo uh, Kingfisher line. So yeah, using a live cigar scout, we had some incredible action today with Marlin. And it uh, looks like I got a little cooter. This is a bread and butter uh, fish for the uh, go-go. Fortunately, because the time of year we're here, there hasn't been too many coots no. around. There we go, we've got a little cooter, a little rat cooter, as we call it. Um, basically, there's plenty here. This is, the, uh, this is where they grow big and they run down to Durban. So we're going to let this guy go and hopefully I'll catch him when he's 25 kilos, maybe even 30 one day. Alright, so cool, man. Hello, buddy. Little cooter. Hopefully I'll catch him one day when he's big. Well, guys, <laughs> that's... Uh... That's us for today. The weather is horrendous, like I've said many a time before, bobbing and swaying all over the place. Uh, we're going to head back to the Gogo, have a chat with the, with the Minettis, and uh, yeah, we'll stay tuned for a, a bit more action from the Gogo next week. Cheers, guys. Cheers. All right, with it being so rough, uh, you guys saw the conditions. It's not really easy to talk to the camera. I just want to explain the outfit that I caught that model on and why it was such a big deal. The Dower Salt is 8'6", uh, spinning rod, two-piece two rod, and I got the Dower Caldea 4000 with 33-pound braid. An outfit like this is actually made for catching snook in Natal, small bonita, not even medium-sized tuna rod. So this, to catch a model like this, this is an achievement of a lifetime. Um, as a testament to the, to the outfit as well. I had another thing which was quite interesting is that I had it rigged up for catching bluefin, sort of like three to five kilo fish. Um, that just gives you an indication of what size fish we were catching with. And I mustered uh, to a big one. Uh, that's it there. Basically, that's the hook I caught that marlin on. And for me, this is uh, that, this is the lifetime achievement. It's a very, very special fish on this outfit. I mean, I've caught marlin before. It's just my second marlin. It's not as if I'm a marlin specialist today, but it's just we, we saw it there, we pitched a live uh, cigar scad to it, and I was lucky enough to go on. And, yeah, for me, that's, that's, a, that's a fish of a lifetime. And this tackle made a fish of a lifetime.